or a camera or whatever you buy, you will put the number there, you will say 10 rupees, 30 rupees, 100 rupees and finally you will say equal to and that will give you the result, so it could do addition. But remember it was just a mechanical device, it could do using some mechanical links, some things which was inside, which looked something like this, it was made out of uh, some mechanical things which I am not going to details, but this is something that was a mechanism of a mechanical calculator. So you have abacus that is also a mechanical calculator, but the user, the person has to decide how which is tens place, which is units place, all that he has to remember and do it. Whereas this you simply key in the numbers, say I want to add 10, 20, 30, 80, 89, 78, it will keep doing that and finally it will tell you okay, the final result is 431. Okay? So that's what it will help you in remembering the numbers, adding the numbers and some of them to even print them. Then came a slightly better one. So this came sometime in 1950 and this was slightly better than these and it could do lot of other things. So what I am trying to show you is how think the various types of mechanical calculators they evolved over a period of time and they became more and more user friendly they help the user in doing the task in a more easy way. Okay? And I am sure you all of you have seen this. This is the calculator which is not mechanical but it is okay. So now in this kind of, this is only using mechanical links whereas this uses something which is very similar to a computer. Okay? So, the basic task of all these machines is same that this is much more sophisticated because it can do division, multiplications, you know square root, right? So all these things it can do and it can have memory, you can put numbers in memory, add into memory, so all those things it can do. So it is much better than this, it is very small, it doesn't need any mechanical power, you can this, what is this, do you know? Uh, solar, solar, solar cell. So you could, doesn't even need a, need a battery. You just keep it in sunlight or not, not even sunlight, ambient light. It will collect energy and it will power the device and it will do the task for you. Okay. Yes. Why was it invented? The uh, calculators? Yeah. So not in this form but sometime in 1960s. Okay. So that was the time. Uh, I, uh, when we go to CDAC, I can just check, we can check on Google when exactly was it. But Texas Instruments and many US companies, they made it, but it was not in this form. It looks slightly different, but when chips were invented, transistor was invented, they could do it electronically. And this is a calculator which you can use at home. But computers were made much before that, in 1940s. But they used a different technique called walls and that they were huge in size. I don't have pictures of that because we are concentrating on supercomputers. So, but if you really want to understand the history of computing, then one of the earliest computers occupied a space which was as huge as this. And it could do very less as compared to this calculator because the technology was not developed at that time. Like as I said, Mahatma Gandhi never used computers because they were not there during his age. Okay? Over a period of time they came in. Like you would see Mahatma Gandhi would travel by train because train had come. But if you look at Shivaji's time there was no train. They would go over horsebacks. Right? So anything whether it is how you travel, how you compute, everything makes progress. Right? So this is uh, to answer your question. The calculators came sometime in 1960s, I don't know the exact year, but computers came before that. Why? Because they were big in size, if you want something that you can take at home, it has to be small in size. Right? So that took time to make it small. And today, as you know, even your mobile phones, they are so small. Because, yeah, there is something called as integrated circuits, chips, okay, that you put, I will show you a picture. And because of that, things become smaller 
they can go into your pocket, they can run on battery. The first computer that was made, it required a big electrical substation only to supply power to it so that it could function. So please feel free to ask questions at any point in time. This is not a class that you go through like your teacher teaches and I am not going to give you any homework, I am not going to conduct any exam. So this is only something which you are going to understand, learn and maybe you may get inspired, maybe when you become big, when you become older, you may like to work on a computer. Okay? So, what is the definition of a computer? So, very simple, a computer computes. That's why we call it as a computer. Okay? If I could, if I could have something which I can tell, okay, this is one number, this is another number, please add the two for me. If it can do that, that in a way is a computer. So, the definition of computer is something that computes. But then we have various ways of defining it like calculator. Why we can call a calculator? Because you, you, you can do one operation at a time. 3 plus 2, 10. Then you can say 5 plus 6, 11. So, it is doing calculations one at a time. But a computer computes, but as I shall tell you later, you can make it do lot many things. Okay? So, let's see what it can do. So, what can it do? It can perform mathematical operations. So, not just additions like the mechanical calculator, but it can do many other things as like uh, since you, are, you haven't studied mathematics much, then you wouldn't know what are the other things that you do. But I am sure all of you know addition, multiplication, subtraction. There are many more operations. If you ever seen a scientific calculator, like root is one of them, square root, that, yeah, huh? pi. pi, calculating pi, using pi, calculating radi uh, circumference of a circle, area of a circle, then volume, volume is length, breadth, multiplied by height. So, as you go, as you will study more mathematics, you will know that there are more complex things that you can do. So, a computer can perform mathematical operations. It can perform complex mathematical operations, not just simple, okay? which unfortunately I cannot tell you now because you are too small to understand what are complex mathematical. But you can rest assured there are much complex things you might, might have seen. How many of you have seen uh, the movie, Ramanujam's movie? Has anybody seen? Yes? Infinity. Infinity, right? So in that movie they have shown how he writes his equations. The equation runs into pages. It can become that complex. Okay? And you give different values to it, it produces different results. Then you try and see, like, uh, do you know what was the number of the taxi that it travelled by? It, I think it was 9211. Let's assume, yeah, 9211. So, he could immediately calculate Ramanujam and he said that this is this number is a cube of three different numbers that is a cube plus b cube plus c cube you take three numbers let's say 1, 3 and 5 so 1 cube is 1, 3 cube is 9 and 5 5 cube is uh, 125 so 125 plus 9 plus 1 that is 135 135 is a number that can be expressed as a cube of two numbers but 9 to 1 1 is a number that can be represented by cube of two different sets of numbers like 1 plus 3 plus 1 cube, 3 plus 5 cube or let's assume another number is 9 cube plus 8 cube plus 7 cube. If these two numbers happen to be same, then we will say that a number has two different summation sum of two different cubes. Anyway, if you don't understand, don't worry. The point was that it can do complex mathematical operations. Now, another thing, it can do very fast. Okay? And how fast? I'll tell you later. But humans can do it at some speed, Ramanujam can do it at much faster speed. Shakuntala Devi, you heard this name? She was called as a human computer. She could beat a computer. Given a task, find out this, this I think there was some problem given to her, find out the root so and so of this number, she could do it faster than a computer. So, not only that, what differentiates it from a calculator is, it can be told to do 
a sequence of tasks. First do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. Okay, you have done all this. Now do this thousand times for different numbers. Okay, like you would soon be appearing for 10th class exam. So do you know how many students sit for 10th class exam in Maharashtra? Maybe 10 lakh. So if I can use a calculator to add the marks of English, Physics, Chemistry, Geography, whatever subjects you have, I can do it from one student. I can do it for 10 students. I can do it for 100 students. But if you tell me do it for 1 lakh students, I will say, hey, this will take too much time. But computers can do it. They will not crib. They will not perspire. They will not sweat. You tell them, day and night they will keep doing. You tell them, they will do it. So, somebody can tell them, you do this, and they will not complain, they will do all that is good. Alright? So, it can do, but how do you tell the computer to do this? Okay? So, for that, first you have to think, how am I going to do the task? See, computers cannot think. They are like your slaves. They can do what you tell them to do. But they cannot do something on their own. Okay? So first you have to think how you want to do the task. Let's say I want to add numbers. So what I will do? I will take number 1, A, number 2, and call it B. Then we will add the 2 and we will write the result. So we think in our mind. My teacher has given me a, a, a sum to solve saying add two numbers. I will write number A, number B. I will add the 2. Now this we need to tell the computer to do. Okay? How do you tell the computer? Computer is not. How many of you have used an Apple phone? What is Siri? Siri is that uh, you command the Siri about uh, open the games. Correct. Open the games. Okay. I know it. So you all know how to open a game using Siri, right? Yes. But how do you tell this to computer? Computers don't run Siri. Computers do not have ears. Okay? Computers do not understand any language that humans speak. Okay? But Siri is a program that does that for us. Okay? But a computer, in the way it is designed, it doesn't speak any language that humans speak. It doesn't hear. It cannot understand. Okay? There are some special computers like Siri which can do it. But I am talking about our general purpose computers. So, it only understands the language of one and zero. All of you know that, right? So, it is very difficult for us to write one zero one zero 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 one zero. I mean, we will not forget. How can anybody remember that? Only ones and zeros. Humans can't do that. So, but the computer only understands machine language. It only understands ones and zero. Wait, eh? Dala sampla? Pathas mint hai? Aonai, chaal zale. Sade chaal lai sampla. If are you getting bored? If you are getting bored, please tell me. So, machine language is difficult for humans. So, what you do is, so humans use programming language like C, Basic, and to that. They tell the computers about it. So, but computers do not understand. So, we have a program called compiler that converts the program written in. Pardon me. Operating system. Ha, operating system is something that allows a user to use the computer. Like, like Android is an operating system that allows you to use the phone. Windows is an operating system, right? So, first you have to write a program, the program operating system will convert through compiler into a program that the computer understands and then it will run. Okay? So, how does the computer do this? I am sure you know this, CPU, memory, I.O. All of you have been told, right? So, you have this CPU, memory, you have this I.O. And how does the computer interact with the user? Using the I.O. So, the user talks through I.O., tells CPU what to do and what is this memory used for? 
the memory you use for storing program and it's for storing data. Like I want the computer to add two numbers, that is a program. What are the two numbers? That is a chip. Okay, so I hope you understand this. So this is a chip. I told you, so this is a yeah. This you have this in your laptop, you will have this in your desktop. It is this core i5. It's an Intel processor. Okay? It is a CPU. Right? So to CPU will connect I/O, to CPU will connect memory. Internally it also contains some memory. Okay? So you have the instructions coming in. The instruction is add. You have the numbers coming in. The number are these two numbers and you get the so that is what is inside this a small part okay? and that is what we call it as the CPU. Okay? So this instructions, data, they come from the memory, the result also goes back to memory, through I.O. it comes to us. Okay? Now how fast is a computer? Okay? If you could do, it's measured in how many operations it can do in one second. A handheld calculator that you have can do about 1000 operations in a second. 1000 operations, fast, very fast. If I ask you 2 plus 2 equal to within a second, you will say 4. Okay, so humans can do in a half a second, quarter of a second. But a simple calculator, but a calculator you can't do it so fast because you have to type in the numbers which may restrict the speed. But if you do 1 million operations, then it is called as megaops. If you do billion operation, then it is called as megaops. If you can, if you do 1 trillion operations, then it is called as a teraflop. Okay. But today's computer, the chip that I showed you, this chip, it typically would do megaops. Typically. Okay. But we want to be supercomputers that are going to do thousand times faster than the fastest chip that we have. Okay? So let's see how we can do it. So first let's look at what a supercomputer is. It's a computer with has the highest capacity. Somebody told me that. It has got the highest capacity in the world. So the top computers that you can build, the fastest computers, one with large memory, which can store a lot of data. If you can build that, then we will call it as a supercomputer. So today, if a supercomputer is running at 1 teraflops, 10, 5, 6 months later, 1 year later, you will get better computer, which will be faster. 2 years later, even faster. So today what we get in teraflops, 10 years ago they were running only megaflops or gigaflops. As we progress, we make faster and faster computers. So today, the fastest computer today is 54 petaflops. So it can do 54,000 trillion operations in a second. So how can it, how does it do that? So how does a supercomputer perform so fast? How can it do so many operations? So first let's try to understand. What, what is this girl doing? Small run world. What are these girls doing? Bigger run world. So if you want to do bigger tasks, what do you do? You put more number of workers. You put more human beings. Now this, you, do you remember this picture? It came in paper one month ago. This was the world's biggest run world. Yes. Where was it made? Pune. Our own Pune. This is College of Engineering Pune. Look at here, 1000 engineering students, so this is a building, this is where you might have visited this place, there is a Shivaji college here, there is a railway station here, and there is girls hostel here, Sancheti hospital is here, that's a, that's a ground. And to make such a big rangoli, you need more number of ants. That's exactly what supercomputers do. Another example. What is this? A tractor in a field. Field, right? Now suppose I want to do such a big field. I want to cultivate such a big field. Move tractor. One tractor. How many days will it take? One week, one month. 
this is a huge one. So, but I, rains are going to come in 15 days. I can't wait for one month. So, what I will do is if I am a farmer, I will put many tractors. What will one tractor do? It will do one, its own area. Another will do the adjoining area. Like this, together they will achieve something which is big. Supercomputers do exactly the same thing. So, what we are doing is these tractors are operating in parallel. Meaning, this tractor is also doing work, this tractor is also doing work, but they are doing in a different spaces. Very similar thing we do here, and that is what is called as parallel processing. So, this was the CPU, IO, memory, that's the basic unit we said. We put more of them, like today, this phone that I have has got 4 core CPU. You must have heard octa core, quad core, right? So, how do you make them perform more? By putting more cores. Not just that, you connect them, then you put many of them, many such chips. So, what we are doing, how many CPUs? 16 of them here. 4, four 3 are 12, sorry, 12 of them. So, like this, you can keep adding. And thus, by doing a parallel uh, computing, by dividing the task among so many of them, you achieve what one cannot achieve. So, that is the basic idea behind supercomputers that they divide the task, they do the task in parallel, each one of them works on its own data to give one computer one small task, together they will achieve a big task. So, here is an example. This is a CDAX website which is doing what? It is telling about the temperatures all over India and here are the temperature. 40 degrees is here, Rajasthan now is 40 degrees. In the hills, the temperature is less. Now, this is a grid. So, what you do is, to one computer, one CPU, you tell to do it only this area. Another one will do this area. Third one will do this area. So, together, it will be able to cover the entire country. And if I were to give this work to only one computer, it would take one week. One week. But I want tomorrow's temperature. If it gives me after one week, what is the use? I want it within two hours. So I will distribute the work. So that is what is one of the application that if your task is big, if your task is complex and you want it to do fast, you will use supercomputer. Okay, so they are used for what? Nuclear simulation without putting a bomb. If you want to know how it, how it is going to affect, you use it. For molecular dynamics, that is if you are making new chemicals or something designing new, you can use them. Then you can use them for weather forecasting, I explained that to you. You can use it for aerodynamics, you want to design a place. How will it go? How fast can it go? How will the air affect it? You can all simulate that here. You have seen many of the animation movies. They are all made using supercomputers. You must have seen how realistic their faces look like. Why? Pardon me? Special effects. You must have seen fan movie. Shah Rukh Khan was little so young. So they took his face and in computer they made changes. So there are many such things. Climate weather, space science, life science. In India, we have the Param. So the first one was 8000. What does Param mean? Param means parallel machine. It also means supreme means Sanskrit. That's an Indian name. And we had Param Padma in Bangalore and what we are going to see now is Param Dua. That's when we are going to go and these are the ones that are in the world. This is in China, this is in US. And since we are running out of time, I will say thank you. <laughs>